Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2024 Toronto Sportsman Show. I am in Hall 5, the Overland feature presented by Overland North. I'm here with the cargo trailer. We set up yesterday, I'm really excited. When this video is out, the event will be over, but it'll just be a recap to show what you missed out and hopefully come next year. Uh, links down below in the description. I highly suggest you come out, it's a good time. And I must say that these are some of the coolest events. I love coming to these things, it's worth a watch. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. fun little add-on I did last minute before coming to the event here. I just added some rod holders for my ice fishing rods up on the ceiling and I think this, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. It was just so practical and versatile. It highlights the fact that this is also an ice fishing shack in the winter is why I have the catch covers. No, it is not a potty. I know a lot of people think that, but I know the fishermen out there, you guys know. You guys know what those are for. Other than that, I have basically a CanBat battery on display. CanBat has been supporters of the channel since literally the beginning, and so they've manufactured some of the highest quality lithium batteries that are available on the market. Check the link down below. Got my laptop on display with some footage of uh, the trailer build, the time lapse, the videos on YouTube. And if you've seen in the previous video, I'm really not happy with this Princess Auto trailer jack. Tire's deflated. This pin doesn't engage properly. You can see right here how it's kind of just inside the hole, right? But it's so wonky. I don't know why it's so loose. It's brand new. Yeah, I'm not happy with that, and I'm definitely considering an upgrade. My voice is like just yapping away too much, but uh, I'm gonna just leave the trailer. Let it be, let people kind of figure it out on itself and uh, let's see what some interesting things we can uh, find. I had a delicious pack of buffalo jerky. Oh man, this stuff is amazing. Some good jerky. Oh man, we're three hours in and I think by the end of this weekend I'm going to lose my voice. Being able to talk to people about the project, uh, there's some subscribers coming, so guys, I'm watching this video, whoever here in person, uh, thank you for coming by and show your support. It's awesome to meet you guys in person. Enjoying, having a great time at the 2024 Sportsman Show. So we're here with Andy from Overland Interiors. How you he doing does, guys? He does some incredible work, speaks for itself, but I'll let him explain basically some of the systems that he's developed for a few of his clients here. So one of the things that I've realized, I've done a lot of vans in the past, from my designs from vans and I'm putting them into SUVs, and stuff like that. So we've got something simple as a drawer, the shelf, it'll fit your Coleman stove. Uh, you see that I hollow out the interiors. So as you can see from this cabinet, from the outside, you can't actually tell that I've hollowed out right. all the interior of it. So there's a honeycomb mesh through everything. And so, you do that to save weight? Yeah. Pull outside, I've made it big enough for a bunch of different fridges. And basically it just straps down and it has, you know, 400 pound slides on it. So it's not gonna go anywhere. Yeah. And they all just lock away. Okay, so this is for an SUV. Let's see what else you've done. Yeah, okay, cause come on over. Another LU cab on the back of a Canyon. Uh, we do have the kitchenette that folds down. 
This is actually the first one that I did. Yeah, nice. so this kitchenette, you can serve coffee from the other side. We've got a complete electrical system, fridge. There will be water in here at some point. We'll be putting another little sink up top. Storage, but this actually turns into a bed as well. Couple pieces down, putting it across, spreading the cushions out. All the detailing, really clean. And how long oh, has yeah. this been in here for? Six months, eight months. Yeah. So it hasn't been that long, but I do have a kit coming for the LED cab. If you have an LED cab or planning to purchase one, there's an upgrade of the wood interior yeah. that you can push cool. in and away you go. Nice. But this is really cool. Okay, so this is a Land Rover Defender, an 87. With Rob, Rob does all the refurbishing of that. I did the interior, I have his vehicle in my shop now and I'm redoing it as well. As you can see from the cabinetry, we've got a pull out table for you know, your morning coffee. A couple drawers. Of course, got to do the dovetail, just so it doesn't rattle apart. And what's funny is uh, I've got a little kitchenette here. You know, all the little cubby holes for the stash. What's cool is that this goes up, and up top, and of course, cutting board, a little bit of storage, and a sink up top here. Right on. And you can stand up in here. Absolutely. <laughs> Can't yeah. even touch the top. Wow. This is spacious. I know. It's huge. That's cool. Two people can sleep up top, one person sleeping here. Based out of Hamilton, Ontario, Dundas, yeah. uh, which is part of Hamilton. So Overland Interiors right on. on Instagram. Uh, it comes with the logo, just look at that. And you can work with Red Bear, I'm working with Sovereign. Probably going to be doing a little bit of work with Chrome out west. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, Van City Van Life. Van City Van Life. On YouTube. Check him out on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. Great guy. Cool. Yeah. So I'm here with David from Blind Man Overland and he's going to show us Yucca Yucca Pack. Yucca Yucca Pack. Yeah. This thing is incredible so you're not going to miss it so I'm going to let David take over here and uh, give us down. a tour. And he's uh, giving us a show with the slide down. <laughs> right on. The original baby. Okay. Yeah so we're out of Lacombe, Alberta. Small okay. town in uh, Alberta north of Red Deer between Calgary and Edmonton. So here we've got our uh, our six foot Tacoma base model camper. There's a whole bunch of options that you're kind of able to choose from once you're kidding your, your camper out. All of our options and our campers and our build prices are available on our website at www.blindmanoverland.com. Joe, we're here with Red Bear Outdoors, our Ontario dealer for uh, the Yucca camper. And we've put it on an absolutely savage Toyota Tacoma, which is probably our more popular uh, platform for the Yucca Pack. But what kind of separates us from the competitors is that one, we're the only Canadian manufacturer of these types of campers. Built out of 100% uh, aluminum, 50-52, 1 8th of an inch thick. So she's rugged, she's built well. We don't do any structural welding. So all the pieces are formed and then bolted together. Mm -hmm. And then anywhere you see a weld is just to clean a seam, right? We don't want any water intrusion. Then we seal the whole thing with Sikaflex. Uh, depending on how you're going to install it, you can bolt it to a camper or you can use it with clamps, traditional truck clamps. We wanted to make sure that the camper was a little bit more camper than canopy. So what we did is we made sure that you got a few goodies right out of the bank, like right out of a base model. So in a Yucca Pack, you're going to get a drop down center table made out of Canadian maple. You're gonna have a whole storage cabinet. You're gonna get a 110 auxiliary plug and a solar ready plug. You'll have mole panels on all your doors and it comes pre-wired with a cab light and an interior tent light that's detachable and rechargeable. The tent material is a four season tent. We do both a full pop, which is the standard, you know, full pop up camper shell. Yeah. Uh, but our most popular configuration is the wedge. Uh, we do spend a lot of the time in the mountains where we get some pretty serious winds out there. Yeah. So. One thing it does is it just kind of keeps the fluffing and the sound to a minimum. It uses bed panel systems. So we've got two hard bottom bed panels in each camper that are uh, placed above the portal plate. This essentially allows you to camp up there without having to wake your partner or your camping buddy up to get out of the bottom. You'll notice that this panel is a lot skinnier. We have a thicker and a wider panel on the inside. The idea here is that the taller person can sleep on the taller side of the cut 
shorter person can sleep on the shorter side of the cut. That way you don't have to wake each other up if you're going to open the skinny panel. A blank slate to basically set up and yeah. upgrade it any way you want. 50% of our customers will kind of either treat it like a shed and then a rooftop tent. Yeah. Or their bikes in here, their inflatable this, boats. This deck system is a separate system. You yeah, can that's have the right. Box. That's yeah. right, yeah. So you'll normally what you're going to see is you'll just have an empty box. Ideally, you'll you'll set it up with either a overland build-out system from Red Bear Outdoors or something similar. That way you can convert it into a habitat yeah. or use it as like an auxiliary utility shed. Yeah, the DIYers. Yeah, too. absolutely it does. Again, where that cabinet kind of comes in handy, like inside there we have an electrical panel. Pull that panel out, pull it out, put it on a bench, install your switches, your plugs, anything like that. Yeah. The wiring stays hidden behind the panel keeps it nice and clean that even a simple like even a first time DIYer can make your wiring kit on your camper look pretty good. You got Appreciate it. I'm with Matt from Adobe. He's here with Lightroom. Now this is a bit of you know unconventional topic, with, but uh, being a videographer, photographer, amateur, um, I do use their software and I use Lightroom to basically edit all my photos. So I'm actually really excited to see Adobe here because it is part of the community. And so I'll just let Matt explain uh, what he's here with and uh, the exciting stuff that he's working on. Uh, so you can see here, this is my rig that I use for uh, photography as I'm out camping, traveling around. It's a bit of an unconventional setup, but we have a display here showcasing our mobile products. Edit photos on your phone. And Lightroom is probably the most powerful photo editor on the market. And with our mobile products, we're really making that um, easy to use and access uh, for anybody uh, who wants to make their photos stand out. Um, but these are some photos from a trip to BC that I've imported are during wildfire season and foggy. So this one's slightly edited, but if I click and hold, you can see it before and after of the haze of the wildfire smoke. Um, and so our, and if I want more detail in the mountains, I can come in, use our dehaze tool and really pull some of that detail out by eliminating the smoke. What's really nice if you're new, we have a lot of presets that you can use to get started quickly. And so these are all curated from our community. And then when you find one that you like, I, I kind of like that, you can hit done. And that's just going to pre-populate all of these settings so you can kind of get a sense for what each slider does. Something like Lightroom is super user-friendly and you don't have to be a photographer to use it. I often just take a bunch of pictures of my phone, but it may not be perfectly level or something like that. So I bring it into the software just to crop it, do some photo enhancements with yeah. you guys. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to go and drastically change your photo. We want to enhance it because sometimes you don't get the best shot. Yeah. You want to really capture the memory of being there. So we help you do that. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks. No problem. Mm -hmm. We're still at half capacity on day two, and this is, I'd say, you know, a solid like 20 hours, over 20 hours of the lights being on continuously. Uh, I'm using my laptop on the inverter and stuff like that, so it's pretty impressive. This is the most I've ever drained the battery. Uh, it's showing 46%. If we're outside and we had solar, I'd probably be back up to 100% by now. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's cool because being here in itself is a test of of you know what I built. So yeah. It was a good day. Yeah, the truck box, the cargo trailer camper conversion slash ice shack inspired a lot of people today. And uh, that's what it's all about. So we'll got one more day left and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Man, Luke. Whoa, whoa, what? Oh. Did you stay here last night? Sunday, Sunday, last day, sportsman show. Gotta, gotta go. go, we're open, man. There's people here. Guys. Come on down, come learn about Overland North and all our events in 2024. Meet some of the cool vendors, some of our partners. Can't wait to see ya. I gotta go brush my teeth. I'm out.
braid knot ropes. I make vehicle recovery systems. Everything I do is made in Canada. Pretty excited to be here. It's the last day. We've done really well. We're really excited. We got to see a bunch of people. We pass customers come in and say, hey man, I have your product. I want some more. Hey man, I have your product. It works really well. They have used our glue treads. We've got people using our rope. Glue, glue treads is a sidewall repair kit. Uh, it's meant for off-road use these. only. We're actually almost at a low friction rings. We're getting another batch coming in. And you hand make all these. Like, hand make all those. And we're constantly growing. We're constantly doing more. So come on out, check us out. I'm still getting into recovery gear and stuff like that. I think I need training as well. Yeah. Right, to learn how to use this stuff. Say that you want to get good quality recovery gear because when you're stuck in a pickle, the last thing you want is the thing to get you out to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Buy yeah. like good quality stuff. I always tell people you can buy the cheap stuff. Don't expect that it's going to get you out. Maybe buy two. Odds are it's going to break on you eventually. Um, and, and all our stuff is tested. All our stuff is... You do your own testing, right? We do all our own testing. Okay. Yeah. You can see a bunch of our tests on Instagram and on YouTube. FreightNotRopes.ca. .ca. All right. Check us out on socials as well. Just the Freight Not Ropes. The Viking. The Rope Viking. The road biking. So what is this here? These are our bags. They're made in Canada. They're made by Adventure Trail Gear just down the hall there. They're a premium quality bag. They are awesome. I've used my bag for about three years now. There's hardly any damage at all to it. It's a full kit, so it comes with two soft shackles, a rope, and a bag. Okay. That's a pretty standard first kit to have. Like beginner kit? Beginner kit, yeah. and it gets you out, and it gets you out of a situation. If you don't have a winch, if you do have a winch, Sometimes it's just easier to grab your rope, chuck it on the back of your truck, chuck it on the front of uh, the other vehicle, and off yeah. you go. Okay, cool. Sportsman Show. I had the pleasure to meet these gentlemen. Venture Trail Gear. Well, he's Nick. Yeah. Wow, I'm, yeah, like, I'm, I'm shocked we didn't get that backwards. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Nick and the owner of Venture Trail Gear. Nigel, so been part of the team right since the beginning. Behind that camera, behind another camera, is Ryan. He's our videographer, part of the team as well. So Venture Trail Gear, we, we design and manufacture custom fabric gear uh, in Fredericton, New Brunswick. We started with vehicle stuff, we moved on to wearable gear, uh, general storage, and now we're expanding to, to more bag types. Uh, check the link down below, you can find Adventure Trail Gear, where can we find you guys? We sell e-commerce, uh, but we also sell through some local places like Red Bear Outdoors in Ontario. Okay. Nice. Otherwise, we ship direct to customers all over the world. Yeah. Okay. Right, you guys are on Instagram, YouTube, yep. Instagram, YouTube, yep. uh, Facebook. So I bought a trash bag. Uh, yes, let's go put it on the truck, and uh, you can tell me kind of that design as well. And, Absolutely. Uh, what inspired that? And, uh, yeah. I'll pop this bad boy open. Protective panel. Got two straps. Put this aside for now. Camera died. So you're putting a protective panel on. Yes. So it doesn't rub the paint it and stuff like that. Doesn't rub the paint. It just takes down on the, the chafing and such. And uh, you know, there's a proper way of setting these up. We do have a YouTube channel uh, that has the old like how to how to from start to finish. Nice. Where the direction of straps, where you put the buckles, three bar slides, etc. You're just gonna snug it up, making sure the outside of the fabric is towards the paint because that's the soft side. And your spring buckle is just up on top um, for now. And then once you get it to a certain point, this is going to be turned around. <clears throat> you bring this up right off to the edge. You bring this down right to the bottom of the door. And I always fold it over about a quarter of an inch. So the strap is not directly on the edge of your paint. It is protected by that panel. Yeah. Bring it down slightly, slide these forward like this, just like that. So you got a nice, 90 degree edge. Yeah. yeah. And it keeps it nice and tight. Break down, break up. That's the protective panel. Yeah, Next, nice. just go down between the tailgate. You will have to adjust where the buckles land once you're in. 
That way it's not, you can't get to the buckles if you have tonal cover or hard shell. Okay. Oh cool, so it's using the same straps to hang the bag. That's right. Right on. Yeah, it's all in one strap system. Came up with the strap system. It's in a, if we are the, the only ones that use this strap system, we were the, the main people that developed it uh, in the world, which is kind of cool. I'll bring the D the D rings that are on the bag and this knot that is on that uh, pink tail. Bring it right down to the corner of that, and then you can bring that up like yeah. there. I like that if like it folds with the trail like when the tail gets down. One hundred percent. So it literally, when you do when you are on the trail and you're like, okay, well we're gonna have our garbage going in. Yeah. Uh, there's little plastic D rings. You can put your uh, garbage bags to your recycling and your yep. garbage that is why the bag was developed in the first place uh, to kind of clean up our trails we all go out there and we all see garbage cans yes, on the side of the trails and yep. it's sad because we have such beautiful land in Canada um, that you know people should probably keep it a little bit cleaner than than, uh, than it has been that's awesome I love the color too with the, the lunar rock and then looks good man the last thing is your final burr bottom and to me this is a critical thing to unhook the bottom of the bag and then when you open it up this binds up and actually hits the bumper not on this side but on this side it would okay. uh, and then you end up cracking the buckle so sometimes we have to ship out some buckles to some people that uh, kind of installed it a certain way and just just a little bit of slack especially when you uh, you start um, filling up the bag it's gonna fill out this way of course and you know yeah. with Ryan he's he's explained several times he doesn't even strap the bottom of his bag because you know, yeah. People are like, oh, is it gonna wave in the wind? It won't. Vehicle wind comes around like that, sucks it right. To it the actually sucks it in. Yeah. Yeah. There we go, man. Being Canada. Appreciate it. Hi, this looks really good, and uh, I promise you, it, it will get used, good. and it will get used hard. Good. I literally permanently keep like a box of garbage bags in my truck, and I just throw the bo the bag in the in my cab, well, now and you it leaks and everything. Yeah. yeah. Now you put them all in the front with garbage bags and you don't mean to you literally when you're setting up like yeah. as you would set up your the back of your uh, truck or yeah. your rooftop tent or etc your trailer yeah. you have your garbage bags recycling black white whatever you use and you have them already in there so you don't even need to do anything you're able to walk over throw a can in exactly in, and it just stays there yeah you need to deal with the sting looks good all right all right As you can probably imagine, we're uh, swapping out that uh, pencil title jack for something way more yeah, robust. I like that you have the panel. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. 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 so, so I guess go forward as much as you can for yeah. now. Just quickly pivot and see. So you can go basically go. So that way it won't clear, but you can pull it forward too, right? Yeah, it still doesn't quite clear. Oh, actually, yeah, it will, because you can lock it up in that position. So it can be locked up like that. Oh, perfect. And then you go. Right on. So Alrighty. Look at that. Moment of truth. Yeah, there's a lift the trailer. <laughs> You're free. Free and clear. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah, so the double wheels obviously spread the load a lot better. They're solid steel wheels and automotive bearings inside the rims. And this trailing yoke design means that as you push the trailer around on soft ground particularly, the wheels just follow where you go. They're not fighting you and trying to 
right. dig in sideways, you're not constantly That's kicking noticed, the wheel. I don't know what's the that one, right? Because the pivot point's off. Yeah. yeah, and then you can raise this up and down four different height positions. So you're on the second lowest there. Yeah. And you can go up two more. So if you really want to have it cranked up to say sometimes guys with boat trailers, they want to drain the back of the boat out so they yeah. can really crank it up. Or if you've yeah. got a quite a lifted trailer like the off-grid ones. Yeah, well, even um, on this one, like when I park it at home, I'll purposely jack the front up so like rain and water and stuff on yeah, the trailer. Perfect. Can, it goes off, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it gives you you got plenty of leeway all the way there and then like we saw folding it up out of the way for travel, you keep everything above the frame and the handle's magnetic so you can just remove that. You got a tongue box here, yeah, pop it out, pop in the tongue box, it just sort of becomes part of the routine. Perfect. Grease. Yeah, so you can grease the gears inside or you can pop the top off too if you want to sort of see the gears inside. Okay. Um, and it's all replaceable if for whatever reason. If you're out in really rough terrain, give it a rinse down, it's it's zinc uh, coated yeah. and 600 hours salt spray tested so it'll take a pretty good beating but yeah. um, like anything mechanical on the trailer, you know, yeah. keep it good maintenance on it and you'll, it'll serve you well for a long time. And so this is the ARC 500? Yeah, yeah, the XO 500. We have a bigger um, or a higher rated model. Physically, it's a similar size, but heavier gauge steel, um, rated to 750 kilos or roughly 1,700 pounds of tongue weight. Yeah. This one's about 1,100 pounds of tongue weight. Okay. Um, and then there are some a smaller model as well. And there is a extra long model if you've got a crazy lifted, you know, 35 inch tires, yeah. four inch lift suspension type setup too. So right yeah, lots of different options. Cool. Yeah, and you guys are outfitted on the off-grid trailers yep. and do you work with anyone else? Here in Canada we work with just about every major off-road trailer manufacturer now and then in Australia where ARC is from they're on everything so yeah. about every six minutes one of these gets sold around the world the uh, the yeah. XO Jack so, wow. and, and growing so awesome yeah. all right so check out link in the description I'll leave a link to ARC uh, bushrangertrailergear.com for Canada okay and uh, or ARC uh, uh, corporation in the US okay awesome all right thank you very much Good. all right yeah. thanks Joel good luck Okay, that is about it. 2024 Toronto Sportsman Show. We're all packing up now. Time to roll up the carpets and get out of here, go back home. If you watch this video, thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone who came out to see the trailer in person. There was, I know there's some subscribers that came out and stuff like that. Met a lot of new people and a lot of people were pretty impressed with the trailer and so it's just really cool. It's such a great community and that's what it's all about. Thank you to Overland North for inviting me this year and you're going to see me at their events like always and check them out, link down below, all the vendors and everything else. I, I'm going to just load it up with links and stuff like that for things I found really interesting that I included in this video. Again, if you couldn't make it out this year, check it out for next year. You don't want to miss it. It's worth the admission and there's just so much fun packed action and things to see here. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, and on to the next one.